Right now, the unemployment rate is at around 3.4%, which is the lowest level that we have seen in about five decades. Now, of course, this isn't always super accurate information. Unemployment numbers can be fudged and kind of how they calculate unemployment. But the main thing here is understanding that people have jobs. It might not be the jobs that people want. It might not be the pay that people want, but people have the ability to get jobs. And based off of that data, the Federal Reserve Bank is saying, well, we have a lot of people with jobs, and so we have or should have the ability to bring interest rates higher to cool inflation down. And the problem is that in order to bring inflation down, we need to cool down demand. If we want to cool down demand, people need less ability to spend. If people need less ability to spend, that means less people had to have jobs. And if less people have to have jobs, that means more pain in the economy. And this is the tough situation where the Federal Reserve Bank has been working to ramp up interest rates, but we haven't seen the full effect of the higher interest rates yet. And the Federal Reserve Bank still hasn't been able to really bring inflation down to where we need it to be. This is that dilemma that the Federal Reserve Bank is facing right now because the Federal Reserve Bank wants to cool the job market. They want to cool down inflation, but they also don't want to break the economy. Not to mention one of the most influential numbers on the CPI, inflation numbers, is the housing market because they indirectly look at the housing market and this makes up almost half, I think it's about 44% of the total CPI number of housing related expenses. And as interest rates fluctuate, that has an impact on home prices. Every time we see mortgage rates drop a little bit, we see a huge surge in demand of people wanting to go out and buy homes. And so every time we see mortgage rates drop, people go out and buy homes, people go out and buy homes, that means there's more demand to buy homes, that pushes home prices higher. When home prices go higher, well, that affects CPI and the inflation numbers, which gives the Fed more fuel to continue raising interest rates, which creates a unique dilemma for the housing market because now everyone's worried about what does this mean for the housing market and where is the housing market going to go? Right now, the housing market is officially booming again, but it might be hitting a breaking point. Let me read you this article from May 5th on Yahoo Finance. It says that the home price rebound could complicate the Fed's effort to tame inflation. And the reason why this matters, let me just read it to you, is because housing costs contribute to 44% in the overall goods and service bucket used to calculate the CPI consumer price index, which is the main gauge for inflation. Meaning, the housing market makes up a huge chunk of inflation, and if the housing market continues to be so strong, that's continued to put upward pressure on inflation, which could pressure the Fed to want to cool down the housing market. But at the same time, what's really interesting is we're starting to see mortgage applications drop even when mortgage rates drop. This is a big flip from the trends that we have been seeing, because if we go back to February of 2023, when interest rates first started to drop, it gave buyers some breathing room, and then we saw prices of homes shoot up very quickly because when mortgage rates dropped, everybody wanted to go out and buy a home, and this increase in demand to buy a home caused home prices to rise because of the mortgage rates dropping. And that was why Bloomberg even put out a piece saying that lower mortgage rates will not make your home more affordable. The reason being that anytime you see lower mortgage rates, you might be able to save some money on the mortgage side on your monthly payment, but you're going to have to pay more money to buy the home because everybody's trying to buy a home when mortgage rates fall. That was the environment for the housing market up until the early part of May because in the early part of May when First Republic collapsed, we saw mortgage rates fall and we also saw mortgage applications not rise. So starting in May 2023, we saw for the first time this discrepancy between mortgage rates and an increase in mortgage applications where we saw mortgage rates fall after First Republic collapsed. And when mortgage rates fell, we didn't see a drastic rise in mortgage applications. Why? Well, there's three potential reasons for this. Number one is people don't want to buy a home. Number two is people can't afford to buy a home. And number three is regulations. Now, starting with number one of people wanting to buy a home, I think people who want to buy a home want to buy a home. I don't think everybody who wants to buy a home has already bought a home. So I don't think it's number one. Number two, which is people can't afford to buy homes, is plausible because now with the high inflation that we have been facing for the last number of years, many people are starting to feel priced out, not just because home prices have risen, but because the cost of everything has gone up. You have to pay more money for your groceries. You have to pay more money to go on a vacation. You have to pay more money to really just survive. And so now when you want to go out and buy a home, 
not only is the home price much higher, but the mortgage rates are also high. And because the home prices are higher, your insurance payments are higher. And because the home price is higher, your property taxes are also higher. So now people are kind of looking at their state of their finances and they're saying, you know what? Maybe we shouldn't upgrade to buy a home right now. Maybe we should just kind of stay where we are right now. Maybe we shouldn't go out and try to do that with a new home because the cost of everything is just so expensive. So let's hold off for a little while until we can save up some more money, have a bigger down payment, and have some extra financial breathing room. And then we have the third reason, which are regulations. As of May 1st, 2023, there have been new regulations in the mortgage market, which make it more expensive for you to buy a home if you have a good credit score. And it also makes it a little bit cheaper for you to go out and get a mortgage if you have a bad credit score. So there was a new program that was put into place. I already made a video kind of explaining this, but I'll just kind of highlight it here. A new program put into place, which essentially said that if you have a great credit score over 740, now the fees you'll pay to get a mortgage backed by the government is going to be higher. So you're going to have to pay more fees in order to get a mortgage versus if you had a bad credit score. Well, now if you had a bad credit score, now you actually get a break on your payments and fees. So it's a little bit easier for you to get a home. This created a lot of controversy because the question is, who are you incentivizing? Are you incentivizing people who shouldn't buy a home to go out and buy a home? Are you incentivizing people who had bad credit scores to go out and buy a home? And at the expense of hurting people who have been working to build up their credit scores, have the right payments, do the right things to now have to pay more money to go out and buy a home. So that could also be a part of it. But what we know for sure is that mortgage rates play an effect on demand for homes. We have seen this time and time again, where people will pay more attention to what their monthly payments are than to the actual price of the home. Now, what we're starting to see happen is that even lower mortgage rates are not creating that intense demand to go and buy a home the way that it did six months ago or even four months ago. Now, what are the actual reasons for this? Is it regulations? Is it the high inflation? Is it a slowdown in the economy? We don't know the exact data or reason why, but we're starting to see this start of effect and this change where now even lower mortgage rates are not creating that huge surge in demand for homes the way that it did before. But then the next factor we have to understand is how the housing market is lagging data. Most of the data that we get is behind. It might be behind a week. It might be behind a month. It might be behind two months. And so now when the Federal Reserve Bank is working to analyze this data, the question is, when they make their interest rate decisions, are they looking at the data that we have? Are they projecting where the data is in the future, or are they looking at previous data? Because previously, what the Federal Reserve Bank has said is that they're going to look at the data that is present to us right now. And yes, that data that's present to us right now is lagging data, but based off of the data that they have, that was what they used to determine what they wanted to do with interest rates. Now, they're saying that they want to look at where they believe the data is going to be going. And so that will then impact their interest rate decisions. The reason why this matters is because if the Fed continues to raise interest rates, that's going to put higher pressure on the mortgage market. If they continue to raise interest rates and you see more pressure on the mortgage market for higher mortgage rates, well, that will continue to hurt demand. And so home prices, like any other asset class, are determined by supply and demand. When you have more people that want to buy a home, that want to sell a home, that pushes home prices higher. When you have more people that want to sell a home than buy a home, that pulls home prices lower. And a big driving factor for demand in the mortgage market are mortgage rates. 